So let's see how you set up AudioCore to use grouping. First things first, make sure grouping is enabled. So either switch it on from the menu or switch it on using this button on the toolbar at the top. If I go online to these amplifiers, make sure grouping is switched on here to pull the details back from the units and also to send grouping data that's been set up offline to the units. So I'll send in this case, sending grouping data to all units. There we go. So I'm online. There is now no grouping set up, but also ensure that you have show relative groups and show absolute groups ticked from the grouping menu so that when you do start adding units to groups, the groups will actually appear on screen. Next, it's advisable to clear the grouping that already exists within the system in case there are some settings that you don't know about. The quickest way to do this is grouping menu, utility, reset local grouping, which strictly in this case we don't need to do because there aren't any groups displayed, so there isn't any local grouping, but I'll do it anyway. And group utility, reset unit grouping. Now that ensures that there is no grouping within any of the devices. This is also switched off the grouping, so re-enable that. Switch on show relative and switch on show absolute again. And now we're ready to go. So now that we've got grouping set up as we want, we'll actually start configuring the groups themselves. So grouping is enabled, show relative, show absolute is on. So I'm going to group my subs together with a relative group. I'm going to group my top boxes left and right together as one relative group. My delay, sub and top on both channels together as a group. And the left, right for the DJ monitors. And finally, the auxes. So to access the the adding of units to groups, click on any channel to edit, and you'll see that there is a group button on every output channel and every input channel. So seeing as we're dealing with output groups, let's start with the subs. Press group, and relative groups are shown 1 to 32 here. We'll talk about absolute groups in the next section. So let's start with relative group 1. This is going to become our subgroup. So I add that. I then go to the second device and I click on the subchannel for that, add it to the relative group. So this is now my sub relative group. As you can see I've got a meter, I've got up down gain controls, mute and solo. If I right click on the top corner icon I can change the size of this group to show more information and more controls. So now I've got a gain slider which adjusts the relative levels of both channels together, mute solo, and I can also add delay to whatever delay is already on the channels, and I can turn the limiter threshold down. I can't adjust it above the point that it's set in the actual channel, but as a group I can knock them all down by however much I want, down to a maximum of 12 dB. So now I have two channels added to this group. If I go and examine the channels individually in the amplifiers, I can see that my 6 dB gain that I've added via the group gain control shows up by the individual channel control. So the top readout is the channel's gain, and the lower readout in pale yellow is the overall aggregated gain. Now that number will be the aggregated value of all groups added together, plus 
the channels gain. So if those channels were in more groups, that number would reflect the pluses and minuses of all the gains in other groups. We'll see that later on when we do a master group. Similarly, I have a slight additional delay added to those two channels in the group, and I've knocked the limiter threshold down by 2 dB across the group. Those are reflected on the delay screen, so I now have an aggregated value for that group's delay. On the limiter screen, I have an aggregated value for the limiter threshold, which as you can see is 2 dB lower because I have taken 2 dB off. On the gain screen as well, you see there is now a group value written here. So just a few final things about setting up a group. Um, we have this group that contains just the two sub-channels in my system. It'd be good to have a more useful name for it. And as you can see, there's a meter on that channel. It'd be good to be able to set a meter point as well. So if I right click on the title of the group, I get some more information about it. Here I can change the name. So I'll set that to subs. And I can also choose the meter point. A double click on any of the other members of the group will change the meter point. Now in this instance, you won't see it change because both channels are being fed the same signal and both are just subs. But if, for instance, there was a three-way cabinet, probably the most useful metering point would be the um, low end rather than the top end of the cabinet. So let's skip through setting up some more groups. I'll set up a group for my low, mid and high sections of both sides of the system. And I'll set up a group for my delay sub and top together on both sides of the system. And I'll group my DJ monitor left and right. So let's start with grouping these together. So my low, I will put into this group. My mid, I will also put into this relative group. And my high, I will also put into this relative group. Similarly, the group has appeared. Similarly then, the other side of the system. Low, group two. Mid, group two, high, group two. Right click on it, I will call that group full range, and I will choose a low metering point. And now I'll quickly whiz through the other groups. And really finally, I will add uh, a master group, which you can see I've already created up here by adding some outputs. In the master group, I will have my main system, sub, low, mid, high on both sides. I'll have the delay sub and the delay top on both sides, and I'll leave out the DJ monitors. But that way I've got a master control, or at least a master mute if I want it, over my subs and my tops and my delays, all with a single control. So you can see that I've already got all the control, all the channels, except for delay top on the right hand side. So I'll go ahead and add that. Delay top, group, and add that to masters. 
and that's the job done. And now if I mute that, that would be muting the entire system, except for the DJ monitors. So now that we've set up some relative groups to control the outputs the way we want, let's set up a couple of absolute groups to control our sub EQ and perhaps our input EQ as a high CQ across the system. So let's start with the sub EQ. I'll select that channel on one of the devices, hit group. Now absolute groups, there are 32 of them as well, but being absolute, a device channel can only exist in one group. So we'll choose the first group. OK that. Immediately I see a big, big reminder that it's a member of a group. So I will also add the same channel on the other side of the system. Absolute group. Number one. OK. So both those channels are now in absolute EQ group 1. Similarly to the relative groups, right click on that to choose the name and the metering point. Metering point doesn't actually matter on the absolute groups because it doesn't show up, but it shows you the uh, members of the group. So let's call that sub EQ. Now remember that by adding the channels to an absolute group, they will all be set to the same values. So do this when you have decided on your EQ. Probably better to do it before you start making adjustments because the minute the channels are all added to the group, they all assume the same value. I can make this a larger view again to see the EQ. So as you can see, this is previously what was set the first member of the group sets the EQ. Now I can make adjustments here and then go back in and look at the channels and see that they have also been adjusted the same way. What I can also do is adjust it within any individual group member and this will be reflected obviously across all the channels that are in that group but you'll also see it on the group EQ. So you can see that adjusting on the group EQ in the background there. This is a more dangerous way to do things. I would advise sticking to using the group EQ adjustment rather than individual channels. So that's an output group EQ. I will make that a little bit smaller. Move it down there. And I'll now do an input group EQ. So let's choose input A on this amplifier. You can see that group 1 has already disappeared because I'm, I'm using it and also because it's an input EQ not an output EQ group. So let's go for number 2. Member of number 2 has appeared and I will then also add D input D to the same absolute group. There we go. So you can see that the title is a different colour, so you can see that's an input group rather than an output group. I'll quickly go in and change that to Master EQ as the name. And if I make that a little bit bigger make some adjustments to that and they will be reflected on the EQ of that channel.